Why is it so hard for entrepreneurs to find love? Shallow hell has to leave the city for love to come in. And you want to remember that feeling of feeling young again. You're an entrepreneur and you're so busy with money. You might as well, you know, marry your cash register, you know, your ATM, because that's not going to keep you warm at night. We know the number one killer of divorce is. Hey. There she is. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm amazing. Well, welcome aboard. Thanks. For everybody who doesn't know the legend in front of you here, this is Patty Stanger. Thanks. She is the, the million dollar matchmaker, the best in the world at helping millionaires find love. You may have seen her on TV. She's an author. She's a CEO. She does all sorts of events, has a new one coming up called Infinite Love and Money to help people find wealth and love. Patty, welcome Hi. aboard. My audience is mostly entrepreneurs. I know okay. that you help entrepreneurs. I mean, you help millionaires, but a lot of them are going to be uh -huh. entrepreneurs. Why is it so hard for entrepreneurs to find love? Because they're so busy and picky and think they deserve the best. So they're, you know, reaching for the supermodel, male or female or gay or straight. I mean, what I love about at least the show and some of the work that I've seen is people come in and they say, I want this, but then it ends up being almost therapy hour for them as well, where you have to fix them and break them down and then build them back up to be somebody who is capable of finding the love and receiving the love as well. Well, all relationships come from childhood. And some people even say metaphysically about past lives, but there's always trauma in the infancy stages to the formative years of what sets the tone of what we believe love should be. And then as we progress and we go on our journey and as we grow up, we make decisions and sometimes they're poor decisions. And then like law of attraction, you know, what you resist persists. So basically the wrong people start keep coming in your life. And even though they look different, they're pretty much the same person underneath and we've got to break them of the patterns. It's all about patterning. And what do you, what's the biggest pattern you find for entrepreneurs that you need to break? Um, that they're insecure, most of them. And that's what drives them to success and hmm. that they don't have the work home balance in check. They're either workaholics, too busy, ADD, always going after the next deal, the next product, and they don't spend enough time, you know, gardening and watering the plants uh, in their family so that the family grows. And sometimes they're so busy, they have no time for love and expect that person to like, you know, come into their life and, and kind of like um, assemble to them what they want, forgetting that that other person has thoughts and feelings and desires and has their own life. So, and so the, how richer, do you... the richer the person, the harder it is for the other person, because what happens is the mm. balance is off. And then when you get two people that are super successful together, like the power couple, they usually explode, you know, like Bill and Hillary Clinton. The sex goes out the window. It neutralizes. And so this, this has been, you know, a lifetime for people of bad habits in, in a certain way of thinking and maybe reliving that old trauma again. Mm -hmm. How do you quickly break it and then create a new pattern? Because if they're going to, if you're going to help them find the perfect match to the man or woman, mm -hmm. gay or straight, they now have to live the rest of their life in a new way compared to how they have been living. Correct. But, there, but there's always like, okay, so the conditioning comes from the mother or the father, the primary caregiver, as well as extended family. Like, for instance, I'm adopted, so I have an abandonment issue. We have to heal that abandonment issue in order to create a whole soul so that they are at the high. I like to believe that we're all vibrating at a certain level. We need to be at high vibration to attract high vibration people. And so we've got to clean that out. And there's systems that I use. And everybody's different. On the show, for instance, a millionaire matchmaker, Kenya Moore, for instance, she attracted cheaters. And she couldn't figure out why. We did the common denominator exercise, and we realized her father had cheated. So therefore, the, the pattern was set. And then once I make them aware of it, they start to see that clarity show up. I'm a big mm. believer in transcendental meditation. I do TM twice a day. The more you meditate, the more clarity you have, the more you make better decisions. And you don't waste your time on the looky-loos or the time wasters or the people that are not vibrating high. That's really what it comes down to. But if you're shallow and you're insecure and you're like shallow how, and you want X, Y, Z, and you make your wish list to the floor and there's no room for humanity, 
you get what you pay for at the end of the day, which is what you saw on my show, millionaires making bad decisions and attracting male or female. And there was plenty of female millionaires. I'm not talking about just men. Um, sure. Attracting really bad people because, you know, they're shallow. Shallow hell has to leave the city for love to come in. How much do you have to work with the other person who might be coming to a relationship who is, who is not maybe a millionaire, who's not as successful, you know, monetarily at least, and might have issues of this person is way more successful than I am and, and their own insecurities? Um, I ran Great Expectations for eight years, which is the largest dating service in the country, and we had average people, you know, firefighters, cops. It didn't matter. Love is love. Um, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the primary breadwinner, so we won't use it as the millionaire, is the one in control of the money. And I tell women, don't do that anymore. You must be watching your finances. You must know how much money you have in the bank, even if you're rich and your husband is paying the bills. You have to know, God forbid, something goes wrong. So it's important that both parties are involved in the finances. That gives them equal equity. When there's equal equity, decisions are made, love is one thing, but also making executive decisions together is the most important thing, or there is divorce. Like we know the number one killer of divorce is money. Then mm -hmm. the sex goes. So if we get everybody's money straight, you know, Susie Orman 101, then life starts to flow easier. Even if you're in a struggle pattern, like, you know, the market's crashing like it did in 2009, you know, those, those men left the city, cried in their soup, they couldn't get jobs anymore. And the women took the jobs for a third of the price, a third of the salary, and they ended up exhaling, you know, and becoming successful in their own right. That's why there's more women in college now than there are men. We're just not getting equal pay for equal dollar. So that's a really important factor, knowing your money, having this. I know it's a terrible, unromantic conversation, but you have to do it. And most women do not want to face the music when it comes to that because they were not taught that. We were taught as children that we're not good at math. You know, we shouldn't be involved in banking or finances. And that has to change. How much of what you're doing now is also part of your mission to help women. I mean, you're a CEO, you're an author, you, you've been on TV, you have all these events. Is that part of your mission, do you feel now? Um, yes, especially with me too. I was the first, well actually our industry was the first industry that had to sign sexual harassment paperwork even before anyone else because of what we do. We're involved in legal sex, so to speak. And we had to make sure our staff was not sleeping with our clients. There's a lot of you know, gray area crap that goes down, pre-Weinstein. And I think that women are not taken seriously in the workplace. They're not taken seriously in the love place. You know, we still want to be, you know, romantically um, taken care of, like opening the car doors, paying the valet, asking us out in advance. But the biology hasn't changed. The technology has. And the technology is dictating the biology. And we're getting to that stage where we're not leaving the house. We're lazy lions. You know, we're not dating like we used to, meeting at the grocery store, the gas station. And we're kind of being really in this hibernation stage where we don't know how to connect. And I think women are at a worse place than men right now because of that. You know, mm -hmm. we, we still are ingrained to wait for a man to ask us out. And if a woman asks a man out, he gets the assumption we're going to sleep with them. So it's a dangerous little spot for women right now. It's not good. And this is globally. I just came back from London. And, you know, the women want Brexit there because they want the foreigners to leave because they're stealing all the men because they're aggressive. Those foreign women are very aggressive with the British men, and British men are non-aggressive by nature. So they're like, let's, let's, let's vote for Brexit. Let's get our men back. It's a really weird thing that's going around mm. the world right now. Each country has a different way of dating in relationships. So, so what's the solution? What do you recommend for women? The solution is, is that... We must find a way to connect in person. I know that's radical, you know? Right. I mean, it's like, you know, we're posting noting it. We can work out of our home. We can watch Pornhub. We can, you know, order food and Netflix. It, and we never have to leave. And most of us are working from home now. So think about it. You used to meet someone at the workplace. You're not even doing that anymore. We must get involved in social activities. I'm a big believer of social activities, finding your interests, three top interests, and start forming groups or joining groups. And that's the way you're going to meet. You know, besides joining a matchmaker or joining a dating site, dating sites are great, but they should not be 100% of your search. It should only be 20%. How do you get 
busy entrepreneurs who are mission driven and getting, you know, wanting to blow up their companies and make mm -hmm. all their money. How right. do you get them to focus on, they say they want love, but they're not putting enough time into their actual health and, and just relationships. How do you get them to shift the focus to say, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to carve out this amount of time right. for my life. Well, I mean, they want to get laid, right? Right? Men want to get laid, right? So, I mean, if you want to have a relationship, okay, and you want to get laid, you're going to have to make that a priority. So, I tell men, if you want sex, women are not giving it away as that quickly, even though we think they are. We're watching The Bachelor, and we're seeing them jump into the, you know, into the fantasy suite. It's not really like that. Women are way more educated right now. They're way more smarter. They're not jumping. You know, the millennials might be a little bit different, but when you get to, like, 30 and up, the game changes because they get serious. They're freezing their eggs. They're thinking about their future. They're buying homes, women. So they're not going to settle at this point. Women are not settling. Marriage is down. Uh, the average age of marriage is 29 now. It's really high, by the way, statistically. Oh. And divorce is at 54%. So women are going, wait, I don't need you to pay my bills. I need to make sure that it's right. So a man needs to woo a woman. And she, he needs to take his time and get to know him. And if you're an entrepreneur and you're so busy with money, you might as well, you know, marry your cash register, you know, your ATM, because that's not going to keep you warm at night. And a good woman is not going to fold that easily. You're going to have to romance her. And how do you help them decide between that good woman or just the easy one? Um, an easy one is usually not the one they want. So they'll sleep with them, they'll coast with them, they'll spend two years with them, they might phantom them, they might ghost them, they might go back to them, but it's never the one they marry. And if they do, they get divorced. Hmm. You know, it's, it's statistically proven that the one that's the harder to get, the one that has her own life, the one that's independent, the one that says, no, I cannot see you this weekend uh, because I'm working or I'm doing something else, that's the one they're going to get more, you know, swing downstairs for. And is it, is it just insecurity? They don't want to be with somebody who has their own career, their own life? Um, you know, we say that men are intimidated by women. I really don't see that anymore because I see a lot of men going like it's real, you know, these men that are struggling, and I'm not talking about the men at the top of the food chain like in Silicon Valley. The men that are struggling, these independent entrepreneurs that are working on the next great idea, they want someone as successful as them. They want to share the bills. They want to take turns, you know, planning the date. They're a little bit more um, from a different generation. You know, they're millennial, and their parents took care of them, and they're living in the parents' house. They can't afford to move out. Um, they barely have cars if they're not scootering it. And on top of it, their parents are like, you can stay here forever. So they don't want to stay there forever. They want to move out, but they can't afford it because they've got student loans and whatnot. It's easier to merge those couples together and share residence. I'm just not a fan of doing it if you want to get married. I think you need to have a ring on it. That's my opinion. Okay? Only because I see, I see what happens. These girls get stuck in these situations for two, three, four years, and they never get the ring, and they're miserable, and they're resentful of the man. If you're looking at a couple now, you know, entrepreneur, married, they feel the love is kind of going away. They're worried about getting divorced. There's probably a lot that needs to change in that relationship to make it happy. But are there, are there one to two simple habits that you found consistently work across different relationships, whether it's date well, night, whether I'm it's... A, I'm a fan of prenups, whether you're rich or poor. So if you move in together, you must make a contractual agreement that a lawyer has, has drawn up. Um, that says, like, you know, that arm war is mine if we break up, or that flat screen TV is mine. And if it comes to a place where you're really wealthy, you're going to get a prenup, okay? And you have to get a prenup. Especially, like, I live in this, you know, I live in a state where, you know, it's one of those places where it's 50-50 and you could get screwed. You know what I'm saying? So I think that everybody needs to be, you know, a little bit business savvy. You can't let the romance go to your head where you forget all the details, it's really, really important you do that. I also think that people need to have conversations. They're afraid to talk to one another because they mm. say it's like, you know, he's going to turn off or she's going to turn off. But these conversations need to be had. Where are you going to live? What's our morals and values? If I'm Jewish and you're Christian, do I allow the Christmas tree into the house? Like all these little details are what is the most important part of relationships. It just can't be chemistry. There's a whole more... You know, like, are we going to have kids? When are we going to have kids? Et cetera, et cetera. The deal breakers, I call them. 
if you've already been in a relationship for a while, you've been with the same person for five years, let's say, and you're gonna you're gonna this weekend sit down and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. What questions, like one to three questions, you think should be asked to open up the communication? I think people well, may not know what questions to ask. Are these people? Is somebody wanting to get married here? Is that what's happening? Let's see, well, let's say they're already married. They've been in a relationship for five years. They okay. feel it kind of slipping. Right, they don't want well, to be in the fifty percent. It's slipping in the in the in the romance department. So the woman want you know the guy wants to get have sex, and the woman's like, no, you haven't taken me out. I haven't gotten dressed up and done my hair, and you're not spending any money on me. And a date night is the number one thing that has to happen. And there's no excuse for it. You can get a babysitter, you know, put the kids down at eight o'clock on a Saturday night and go out. Men tend to be lazy in this department. Um, they also get annoyed at women that they always have to think of the thing to do. So you could take turns, date night, plan activities that each of you want to learn together. You can't just do what you want to do. Like if, if I'm into baseball and you know, and he, you know, he's into something else, you can't just always do what you want to do. You know what I mean? You got to think about maybe joining classes that you would learn something together, going on a trip that you both wanted to go to, the theater concerts, something that makes it really interesting and exciting that you look forward to. Because the whole secret is to make you feel like you were back in high school when you felt young and mm -hmm. you feel, you know, really romantic and you had a great life, college, high school, and you want to remember that feeling of feeling young again. And as we work together and live together, we feel old. That's really the problem. Got it. Now, you've got this event coming up, Infinite Love and Money, The Secrets to Creating Wealth and Soul-Satisfying Love. Talk to us what's going to happen at this event. Well, love and money are very synonymous together, okay? Um, if you don't have money, love doesn't ensue, usually. Um, and then the same thing can happen if you have too much money, love can break up as well. So they're kind of like together. And we know that a lot of men are really interested in making a lot of money, as, as well as women. But we found that when we did Love and Money together, more men showed up for the event. It's not going to just be a female event. Like, we go to all these self-help events, and it's always female-driven. And then if you go to entrepreneurial events, it's always male-driven. They're not enough females. So we're bringing two communities together. Um, there are tricks and trades of my secret sauce from my grandmother that I've been using for centuries, as I like to say, that teach people how to draw love to them. If they're in a relationship and it's not working, we're going to fix it. And also, if your money doesn't flow, um, you know, I'm a millionaire. I teach people how to become millionaires. And I teach them tricks of the trade on how to get money to flow really fast. And time management skills as well, which is the secret sauce to my business philosophy. Most people do not have any time management. They just, you know, expect the secret to sit there and go namaste and om, and it's going to fall in their lap. That's not true. you got to work at it. But there are smart ways to work at it. You know, as we say, work smart, not hard, right? And, and so this is a this isn't just like a one hour seminar. This is no, this is a full three on three day event. event in Beverly Hills at an estate. It's limited space to forty people. Um, it's a little pricey. It's twenty five hundred dollars a ticket. Um, there is access to me as well as the Walters, which is a husband and wife coaching team that I work with. Uh, they've been on my show before. And what's really great about it is we're going to go deep. We're going to fix you fast. Like if you watch my show, you know I have 42 minutes to tell a story and 10 minutes to fix you. I do that with every single person. Every person on my show has cried in the hot seat. I do that with everybody. And I get to the core. I am psychic. Um, I'm clairaudient. I hear a voice. I can channel information from above and tell you what's really going on in your life that you probably didn't even know you knew existed. And I fix you, like, you know, pretty much on the spot. There'll be meditation that we use. I have a special meditation. Uh, I have a website called attractingyoursoulmate.com. There's binaural beats. We believe in subliminals really helping the left and right brain to get in synonymous uh, perfection so that you can attract love to you, you can attract money to you. If your brain is not at capacity, which we only use 10% of our brain, then it doesn't flow. You guys know it is nootropics. You're using like all these pills on the market, like Joe Rogan and all that. I do that with meditation. You don't need to take the pill. I'll get your balance in your brain and your right and left side so that you can get rid of the negative thinking. You can't cross its positive thinking much faster and you'll have clarity. Clarity is the secret sauce to everything. Nobody talks about clarity. We do that in a three-day weekend. Plus, there'll be a lot of fun things to do. We believe that when you sing, 
you um, increase dopamine and serotonin. So nice. we will have a sing off, which is my favorite thing to do. You don't even need to exercise. If you sing for 20 minutes a day, your serotonin and your dopamine will go through the roof. It'll change what? your mood in five seconds. It's better than any pill you could take. What's your go-to song? Oh my God, I will survive. There you I go. love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, well, everybody, the website is infiniteloveandmoney.com. Uh, for the YouTube audience, we'll, we'll link that up in the description below as well. Patty, thank you so much for taking thank the time. So really appreciate you. Really appreciate it. Bye, guys. Amazing. Take care. Thanks. If you want to see the one-on-one -on -one hypnotherapy session I did with Marissa Peer, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Your mind's number one job is to keep you alive on the planet. You think hypnotherapy is super scary, but it really isn't. It's simply a way of accessing your subconscious mind because we want you to be happy, and it really is easy.